Looking for the new life forms, you want to map them into our existing known tree. You always have this problem, won't you, where we never know for sure if that current tree we think is true is the complete tree. So it'll take a little more work, even if you have a life form, to even figure out whether it really maps into the tree, because we might have the tree wrong, right? Yeah, let me see if I can find the tree in this slide. Uh, Rex raised a good point, which is it's hard to know what's really not on your tree when you only have one tree. It's hard to know the boundaries of the tree when you only have one, and it's hard to know that you've got the complete tree when you've only got one. And in some sense, we'll only be able to answer the question when we've got something else to compare to. And I like to explain it with a simple story. You know, imagine you have a library and all the books are in English. Right? Now you get a new book. Uh, let's say uh, you get a new book in Spanish. It's clear that that book has the same alphabet, the Latin alphabet, as the English books in your library do. But it's also clear that it's a different language. Uh, on the other hand, you could get a book in Chinese. And it's clear that it's not the same alphabet at all. And in fact, it's even a completely different schema for representing information. And you could have three books, English, Spanish, and Chinese, and they all could be books on how to build a chair. And it's curious, because at the very bottom level, the books are made out of paper. And at the very top level, the books describe how to make a chair. It's the intermediate level where the books differ dramatically. And that's the problem we anticipate finding in other life. At the ecological level, life on Mars is gonna be the same as Earth. It uses sunlight, lives in water, takes up CO2. Ecologically, it's gotta be the same because it's living on a planet that's got the similar ecological opportunities and challenges. At the bottom, it's gonna be the same, carbon and water. And that's why we go to Mars, because those, that's an environment with carbon and water. Where we're hoping to find differences is in this intermediate complexity and that is the complexity represented by this tree. But how can I be sure it'll be different and how different it will be? Will it be like English and Spanish, which is a hard case to pull apart, or will it be like English and Chinese, obviously different? Can't say until I actually get them there to look at. Question here? So at least I didn't need 50 slides to answer your question, just one. <laughs> the, uh, could you talk to us about the part in blue there, the archaea? The archaea. And then I have a question behind it after you. Yeah, okay, thanks for that question. This, this, is the, uh, di this diagram is the original tree of life as mapped out by Carl Wolfs, who was a biologist at the University of Illinois, Urbana, who first pointed out that this is the correct mapping for life on Earth. Brilliant piece of work, and he hasn't got the Nobel Prize for it yet, but if they asked me, I would certainly vote for it. This is RNA, and it shows the RNA mapping. Uh, there's other ways to map out the tree, but they are all effectively make the same point. And it makes two points. One is that all life can group into these three domains, bacteria, uh, eukarya, which plants and animals and most of your friends and your neighbors, uh, unless you live in San Francisco. And then you find <laughs> archaea and bacteria. Archaea, if you flew in the San Francisco airport and you saw the pink ponds out in the bay, those are archaea, extreme halophilic bacteria. Uh, normally people think of archaea as sort of obscure organisms that only live in extreme environments like the saturated salt ponds out in the bay. But in fact, they also live inside our intestines. You have about 1% of your gut bacteria are archaea. It's curious because although they live inside us, they don't cause disease. Only these guys, only the organisms in the red states cause disease. The organisms in the blue states don't cause disease. And we don't know why that is, right? Uh, and yet what's curious, makes it even more curious, is that these organisms are more closely related to us than these organisms. Here's the common ancestor. They're more closely related. We have archaea in our gut, and about 10% of the population have methanogens. So you actually produce methane. And in cows, the methane is produced by methanogens. The one ecological niche that archaea have that no other microorganism or eukarya has is methanic methane production. And it's very curious. We have no understanding why do these guys not cause disease? Why is methane the sole province, methane production the sole province of archaea? It's a, to me, it's the favorite question as 
the type of question that we'll have a better understanding of if we have more than one tree to compare. It's a question about looking down on trees of life rather than looking inside a single tree of life. And understanding why bacteria cause infection and archaea don't could have some important implications. And, and so the question I was going to ask is how, how can we really be sure that the blue isn't already um, extraterrestrial? Oh, we, we know they share... I have another slide, but I'm not even going to search for it. All these organisms on this tree have sequences in their ribosomal RNA that are identical. There's a stretch in the ribosomal, in the 16S ribosomal RNA coding for that, that basically says, I am from Earth. And it's a conserved sequence all through the tree of life. It's the basis for a tree like this. So we, we definitely know that these, these are like books that all have the same words. All the genetic, all the genomes of each of these organisms share major paragraphs even, not just words, but entire paragraphs that are duplicated throughout the genome. So it's, it's definitely a single common origin. There may have been other origins that we don't see. There may have been more than one type of life that we haven't seen yet. There may be aliens among us, but we haven't discovered them. Partly because the tools we use to search for life are based on this tree. So the only thing we're going to see is things that are on this tree. When you take a sample to a lab and say, is there life in it? What they do is they amplify DNA with PCR. They're not going to see anything that isn't on this tree because what they're using to, to detect life is the primers that match to this tree. So it's this tight little circle that we go round and round and round.